Hey everyone, it's Farrick, and welcome to the gear and strategy that I'll be using on Michael Hexflame from level 60 to level 99, and what is, in my opinion, the best gear and strategy to use on a balanced character if you're soloing the game. To start off, we're going to go over the gear, and then I'll show you the deck setup that I recommend, and also just I'll talk a little bit about the strategy that you're going to employ when you're going through the game. To start off, for the hat, I'm going to recommend the Hood of Judgment. Honestly, for the hat, robe, and boots, I'm just going to recommend full waterworks. I did use the House of Scales robe on my Death Wizard, but I think waterworks gear is just so much easier to get that there's really no point in using House of Scales gear. Obviously, if you run House of Scales and you get any of the pieces of gear, you might as well just use that. They're so similar in stats, and in PvE, stats that are just slightly different really don't matter all that much. The, big, the thing that will make the difference is how you play in the PvE battle more than the exact stats that you have. So I would just use whatever you have available and don't worry about it. So just get full waterworks. It is the easiest to get by far. It also gives the most resistance. And honestly, most of your damage comes from your blades anyways. And you'll see at the very end that you have good damage anyways. So just hood of judgment, cape of judgment, boots of judgment. Uh, the hat you get from Luska, which is the first of the, like, the main bosses and then you get the robe and boots from the final boss full waterworks and yeah now for the wand you're going to use the sky iron hosta this is easily the best wand in the game until level 115 uh now obviously there are better bizarre wands you can start buying at like level 108 110 all that stuff from polaris but honestly for a farmable wand you really don't need to upgrade more than this this is it gives you 10 percent damage the only wand that i would say is better than this is probably this thing called the she staff when i go over the stats you're gonna see why that wand is really really useful the 10 percent damage from this wand makes a very very little difference that's why for a wand you really should not be worried that much because you get this so easily at level 30 from mount olympus you're guaranteed to get it once you fight Aerie savage spear you might as well just use it 10 percent damage you get one bonus power pip you really don't need anything more than that she staff is better in my opinion if you get hold of that then use that until you can get perfect pips and accuracy from jewel socketing but until then this is literally all you have to worry about now for the ath aim this is where it's going to be different depending on what level you are and then you're also going to want to upgrade and i'm also going to explain why you want these different pieces so obviously i have the lion king's razor claw now this athame you can craft from the uh recipe vendor in zafaria he's in um he's in baobab market koyate ghost main he's the one that sells this he also sells other athame recipes as well now until then you're going to want to use the bear's claw of balance or the cosmic chris or you can use both this is crafted from Aegeus and Celestia and actually I have, a t I have a location mark there he's in Crustacean Empire um, in fact I'm just gonna go there right now just to show you uh, this is actually the guy that sells three of the pieces of gear that I'll show you in this uh, in this guide so you go to recipe shop he sells them these are the reagents that you need to craft them and these are the three pieces of gear that I will show the reason why you want both of these is because if you want pure damage you're just doing normal questing the bears claw bounce my opinion the best you can use until you can get this great power pip chance it gives you a little bit of block damage health mana it even gives you some good jewel sockets although one thing i will say is that besides triangle jewels uh, jewels are not that great at this level i would i really would not worry about jewels at all i just happen to have a three percent accuracy jewel so i put it on this thing right here but um this is what you want to use bears claw balance and then also cosmic chris now the reason why cosmic chris is so great is because Unlike on the Death Wizard, as a Balance Wizard, you can actually heal with Availing Hands. And the incoming and outgoing on this is just so good that the 7% the damage, it makes a very small difference. A single Balance Blade, which is the weakest blade in the game, 25%, is going to make more difference than that one blade. Meanwhile, this extra heal boost, uh, it can potentially make an Availing Hands do like hundreds more damage, uh, hundreds more healing, excuse me. So that's why in certain situations, this is worth it. But once you get to level 66, I feel like you should just craft this and this should just become your permanent athame. I wouldn't recommend using Cosmic Chris anymore because obviously with this one, you can also get the 7% um, universal damage. Uh, you also get some block, you get, you get mana, which that's like the worst part of this level 58 gear. You don't get any mana with it. And when you're doing a battle where you need that heal boost, you're actually at a risk of running out of mana. It's actually happy. I actually got really close to losing a battle because I almost ran out of mana. If I fizzled one more time, I literally would have been out of mana. There is one other athame called the Oliphant Storage Scimitar. 
Um, it's essentially the exact same stats, but it gives 60 more health, but it only gives 35 mana. And just because uh, I feel like 410 mana, it's just better to play it safe. That 60 health is almost never going to make a difference in a single battle. So uh, you can craft whichever one you want, but I just prefer to play with higher mana. Um, because I have almost run out of it. So that's why I just think this is the best thing that you can have. This is where uh, I'm going to make this guy a little bit different. Because this is level 60 through 99, I will show you what pieces of gear that you will want by the time you're, you know, getting uh, to like level 90. So once you're at level 90, you unlock Tartarus, which is one of the Aqualand dungeons. And all these three pieces of gear will say the same except the boots. Uh, you're going to want to upgrade the boots to, and you don't need to, but because I'm going to be soloing Rattlebones, Crocopatra at level 100, I personally want the either the Poseidon boots or the Defensive Hades boots because either of those two is pretty much a direct upgrade to these boots of judgment. Honestly, the, the boots for the Waterworks gear is the worst piece of gear in my opinion. So it's no surprise that at level 90, they do get upgraded. And that's the only thing I'd upgrade into for like these four pieces of gear. For the Athame, there's really no other alternative. The best Athame is the Blade of the Fell Titan. It is a universal Athame. So because I already have this for my Death Wizard, I'm going to use it again on my Balance Wizard. I already have all the jewels sockets unlocked. I just shattered the Death Jewels that I had on it. And I'm just going to put a Tear Socket an accuracy jewel or pip jewel whichever one but it'll probably end up being an accuracy jewel good heal boost better block really good pip chance really good health great mana this you get from Cronus, by the way so this is the secret boss in tartarus as soon as you enter you go to the left that's who you farm for this get one of them on your account you'll never have to farm it again because you can transfer between wizards amulets it really does not matter because the amulets at this level really are not that great as a balance wizard your utility is kind of weak for your own school so honestly, getting anything that gives you utility, that's what matters more than the stats on it. I have the skills of Justice Charm. You get this from Molars in Lower Zigzag, or you could also get it from the Gold Key Room. It's a slightly different amulet, but it still gives the Balance Blade card and it gives 2% damage. It just gives a little bit more health and you get two square sockets instead. But honestly, I literally only have this for the, uh, the Balance Blade card. It's just nice to have a 30% Balance Blade. But if you can't get this, then just use any amulet that gives you a faint. You don't have to use it in every battle. You have more than enough blades already. You need two different blades, so you should either have a pet that gives you a blade or have an amulet that gives you a blade. Honestly, just get the pet because the pet's probably easier. It's easier to get a pet that gives you an item card blade. You just need two different blades, and uh, that should be enough for pretty much every boss battle and mob fight. Amulet does not matter too much. Anyways, let's move on to the rings. Now, for the rings, initially, I was you know, going between the Golden Ring of Battle and Stellar Signet, but... Once again, Stellar Signet compared to the Morgantine Signet, they're crafted by the same guy, Aegeus, in Celestia. And once again, I'm losing out on three in three incoming, three outgoing, and one pip chance, and a tiny bit of health to gain 150 mana. I personally just don't want to run out of mana. You can use either one and you'll be fine. I just recommend higher mana because, you know, like th these stats are already really good on this, so you really don't need much more than that. It's just better to have the mana, in my opinion, but you can use whatever you want. Other than that, you want to use the Golden Ring of Battle. By the way, these two pieces of gear, Bear's Claw of Balance and Golden Ring of Battle, you can buy these from the Bazaar. Um, Balance Wizards, for them, you can actually find both of them pretty easily, unlike other schools. Uh, you'll always find the rings, but the claws are usually rare for other schools, but for Balance, it's pretty common. So you will find those in the Bazaar. And then obviously, the rest of these are crafted or farmed. Now, once you hit level 90, just like the Athame, you do get an upgrade. This is farmed from the Secret Boss in Mount Olympus. Gladiator Demachiris, he's, um, if you go past the guys that are past Aeris Golden Apple, there's a little thing right there, you can go in there, and that's where you fight Gladiator. Um, he drops this ring, and just like the Blade of the Fell Titan, it is a universal thing that every, every school can have, so I just have it from my Death Wizard already. This ring is just really, really good. 17 incoming, so I guess you're only, you're gonna have a lot less heal boost, and it's not gonna be the universal ring that you use for every battle. Uh, for example, I might end up using the Morgantine Signet over the Alpha and Omega Ring or even the Stellar Signet, depending on if it's like a super hard boss battle where I need to heal a lot. But for the majority of the game, when it's not like a super hard boss, I'm probably going to be using this along with this. I already have the Jewel Sockets unlocked. Great health, great mana, great pips, really good block, damage, heal boost. It's just the best. Now for the pet, y'all already know me. In my opinion, the best pet for solo PvE is a straight up triple double pet which is triple damage double resist talents pain giver balance dealer balance giver proof defy pretty much all schools the exact same thing applies i have mine at max stats for everything except intellect which does not affect any of the stats um or any of the talents i also have it on a balance hamster which you can only get 
from the Balance Decathlon, which is an event that runs every seven months. And in my opinion, this is the best hamster to get because you can use this on any school. You don't have to just make a balance plate out of it. You can literally make it for any school because Sharpened Blade is just a universal card anyways. And Balance Blade, you can use that on any school. It does not have to be on a balance wizard. There's really not, not much else to say. Watch my pet copying guide. Don't use a blood bat though because blood bats are super outdated. Um, use whatever pet you have available and uh, you should be perfectly fine. And then at this stage, once you hit level 60, if you want to solo Yevgeny, if you want to challenge yourself, I am making a pet like this, except instead of Death Giver, or sorry, Death Dealer, I'm going to try to get Maycast Fairy, and that's going to be for the Darkmoor solo, but obviously you don't have to do it. You'll easily find people to farm dar the third stage of Darkmoor, so that's not really going to be that important of a solo, except just for the sake of soloing it, really. Mounts does not matter. Use a stat boosting mount if you have it. It makes no difference. Um, and then for the deck... I'm going to be using the House of Scales Array. You get this from Belosh, who's the Stone Skeleton Key Boss in House of Scales. And it gives 1% accuracy, and I obviously you want to go for the Triangle Socket one. And you want good accuracy because you don't want to fizzle. I fizzle like crazy on my balance. I, I just get really unlucky, I guess. But balance, unfortunately, just like death and life, uh, you don't get any accuracy from your Waterworks gear. So uh, those schools, they, they, they're usually the schools that fizzle the least, but... They're probably the schools that fizzle the most post waterworks because you just get no accuracy from your gear unless you have some house of skills gear already so you're going to rely on jewel socketing um these jewels i believe uh plain accurate citrine that's what they're called jackal bandits inzin zebu bandit the male ones black tusk cultists a bunch of basically a bunch of different mobs in zafaria uh, i'll leave a link down in the description below to the wiki where it shows you the different mobs that drop it but um, I have one on my Athame, I have one on my deck, and my deck also gets 1% accuracy. So I do have perfect accuracy. I will never fizzle a normal balance spell. So that's, and then like later on, once I get the, so my pip chance is not perfect. You're going to be missing out on either perfect pip chance or perfect accuracy if you're using any of this gear for any level 60 wizard. But once I get to higher levels, I can use this. Um, and I can use this and by then once I get the Poseidon boots as well I should be at perfect accuracy and pips also if you have the she staff you'll also be at perfect pips and accuracy so anyways that's the gear and deck setup uh, once again if you're missing a piece of gear or whatever it does not make a huge difference I think the most important piece of gear is just making sure you have gear that gives universal resist uh, making sure you have uh, this ring crafted because the heal boost is so nice in fact it is so nice that even for mob fights, I literally use this gear setup. I don't even use the Golden Ring of Battle. I think um, it's just easier that I don't have to end up changing my gear all over and over again. I just find this specific setup right here just the best one. I'll show you the stats right now. Health may vary because I'm currently level 71 when I'm making this, but I have 97 damage. If I really wanted 100 damage, I'll go there, 104 damage. But um, I just prefer the healing stats because then I don't have to change it out when I go into a boss battle. 104 damage, 97 damage, whatever point is it's really good damage most of your damage is going to come from blades anyways 45 resist which is really really good it's even better than i had on my death wizard 15 percent accuracy so i will never fizzle a bounce spell 88 crit 49 block pretty good you're not going to get when you do get because crit and block work way differently than they did before these are pretty good stats for crit and block uh having more crit than block is also nice because then that means my crit heals do more 3% armor piercing, that's just because I, I just randomly had a plain accurate or plain piercing thing uh, lying around. I do not recommend farming for them. You really don't need pierce at this level. I mean, you could use it, but the problem is you just can't really get it that easily without sacrificing other stats or spending a ton of time slash crowns farming for the pierce jewels. So I would not recommend going for pierce. Heal boost, amazing. 54 incoming, 17 outgoing. Uh, I believe a critical availing hands will do like... 24 20 2200 healing almost so for four pips it literally heals like two-thirds of my health which is just really good by the way that would do like that would do like like at least like six seven hundred less maybe even eight hundred less if i went for the extra seven percent damage that's why heal boost is so good on a school that can heal and then 92 percent pip chance pretty good i rarely fail pip um so yeah these are these are the stats now for the deck setup uh i'm just going to show you what you really need so for mob fights um you just need balance blade i like to so i have my amulet blades i have my pet stuff so i just pack you know whatever i just do that and then i'll have in sandstorm i'll have one power nova in if it's a boss battle i'll have a hydra in as well and a judgment and then i'll just pack four enchants because even though i have five hits because if I'm facing a balanced boss, I'm going to use Hydra. If I'm facing a non-balanced boss, I'm just going to use Judgment. Judgment is a very, very good spell. 
Um, I people don't talk about this spell enough. People always just seem to say that Balance is a tough school to solo quest, but honestly, in my opinion, this spell just makes things so much easier. If you're facing a Balance boss, this spell's damage per pip is really, really high. Um, it is so high that I really don't even use Elemental Blade and Elemental Trap that much anymore. I used to use it. At lower levels, you should use it, but... Um, once you're at higher levels, just having, if you have at least two different balance blades, this spell is just going to do so much. Um, you could also pack a faint, but literally the, the way I play, I, I don't even need faint at this point anymore. Um, and then in sideboard, I just like to pack, uh, some TC balance blades. You can buy these from the librarian vendor in wizard city. You should have them in, but I would use them sparingly because they're super expensive. They're 2000 gold a piece. Um, make sure you have some reshuffles in. Um, I also like to carry cleanse charms pierces a couple shatters um you know just I, I like to have my sideboard pretty stocked up because um it doesn't cost that much to do it and uh, just having them in there is just worth it uh, you can even have a couple tower shields if you want uh you really don't need to go for this but i just always have those things in um and uh yeah four balance blades i have a sharpened blade for my pet a balance blade for my pet um, honestly, just make sure you have a balance blade from your pet. Just choose any pet that gives you a balance blade or just do the balance decathlon. Balance blade for my amulet or I'd have the jewel of the faint if I didn't have that. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gear and deck setup. Now I'm just going to I'm going to go ahead and just show you a mob fight and a boss fight just to show you uh, why I like this deck. So we're just going to go to Zafaria, which is a world I just completed. It's literally all you do. So you you have a very high chance of pulling your blades. In fact, I'm pretty sure you're like almost guaranteed to pull at least one blade um, so I just like to enchant sandstorm discard identical blades and you literally just need two different blades and a sandstorm and that will kill pretty much any mob in Zafaria probably even Avalon uh, I don't know what the updated average health is of the mobs but I'll just show you how much this sandstorm does if you get to high level worlds like Chrysalis Azteca uh, you can just use double blade power Nova and it does a lot of damage and then yeah you have your Hydra and stuff like that too but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and blade here. I have Colossal because I, I've finished Zafaria and I've finished Drum Jungle and I have that spell, but um, you know, even if you don't have Colossal, just a double bladed. And then I like to use Sandstorm because they updated the animation of Sandstorm to hit all at once, but they have not updated the animation of a spell like Power Nova. Um, I also didn't pull it because I wasn't really discarding that hard for it, but right here, I'll just use this and look at how much damage this does right here. Just literally just two blades, a 25 blade and a 30 blade, which is pretty average crit watch how much this does bang they're just dead although i did crit on both of them but if i didn't crit on them it still would have done like 1700 or something like that so that's literally all you need to do for mob fights and then obviously um discard harder if you want to pull for your power nova um i just like to have and also actually one thing i am forgetting is you don't need to have it in all the time if you just if you're about to go into a boss battle just really quickly throw in two availing hands um because you never know if you might need to use them um, because, you know, depending on the boss battle, you might need to use a faint because it's a super high health boss. Uh, once you get to, you know, Avalon, Azteca, Chrysalis, the bosses start to have a lot of health, so, uh, you can go for a faint. Um, and actually, you know what? I'll just go ahead and uh, show you with what, what setup you should have once you go into a boss fight. But, um, because this deck is not super easy to get, um, you're just gonna, you're just gonna want to add some stuff in, but just the base deck setup should consist of these spells right here. You could also get rid of Hydra, but because Hydra is a little hard to find, I, you might as well just leave it in there. Um, Faint is pretty easy to find because you don't have that many death spells, but. All right, I'm in here. We have a, a pretty high health minion. It's 2300 health, um, and we have a pretty low health boss, but. I'm going to set up the deck in a way where let's just assume I'm in Azteca or something. Let's just say there's a 3,500 health minion, which I don't even think the minions get that much health. And let's say there's a 20k health boss. I'm going to use this amulet instead. Um, I'm going to pretend I don't even have sharpened blade. Uh, I'm going to pretend I only have a pet blade, which you should absolutely have. Uh, I have my amulet faint from the, the, the amulet. Um, and then I have just normal faint. And uh, I'll show you just how easy this gets. Uh, also pack in two heals Two heals so this is a pretty average deck setup Let's just jump in and I'll, I'll show you just how easy it gets All right, I didn't pull any enchants, but I'll discard one balance blade here I'll go ahead and draw from my sideboard. I pulled a shatter, but I'll use this balance blade right here
All right, I pulled my other balance blade. Honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull for my power nova because um, if you're an Azteca or something and the mobs has mob has a lot more health, then you actually can't use Sandstorm to take out the minion. You're gonna have to use power nova. Also, this mob right here can use Death Ninja Pig, so if that puts a weakness on me, then I definitely need a power nova to kill. Um, and I actually didn't pull the power nova, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and. Uh, just pass here honestly I could blade here obviously but you know I'm just showing you like what you should do if if your deck isn't working properly with you there's not that many cards in this deck it's only like 20 or something like that so realistically if you deck fail really hard and pull all the cards that you don't want there should only be one turn where you have to just pass and you can't use anything so all right uh, and Honestly, I did not even pull my enchant, but, um, which that's actually kind of unlucky, but I can just go ahead and use the same exact balance blade that I used before. Okay. I don't know what that's about. Animations are bugged, I guess. And there it is. So, what I'd actually do here is I'd go for a heal first, just so that I get some healing over time happening. Because that's how, in availing hands, you should like try to predict that you're about to get hit for a lot more damage, and just use it a little bit early. Because unlike Seder, you can't just get it all at once. So. There we go, crit, and watch how much this does. 170 first tick, and then watch how much it does every single round. Alright, then I'll go ahead and use Power Nova. Six forty two around. Okay, well, unfortunately, this boss has such low health that I actually just killed it with just a double-bladed Power Nova, but um, what I was trying to get at there was you take out the boss and the mob with Power Nova, the heal over time keeps you alive, and then you just go for, like, a double-fainted, double-bladed Judge, and that should literally do, like... You know, I I'm gonna have to show you all that again, because that was... I'll, I'll go to Mushu just to show you how much... A double bladed, double fainted, eight pip judge does. All right, that is four turns so far. Let's see, five, turn five judge. How much does that do? Two blades, two faints. How bad is balance really, and how slow and how annoying is it really to PVE on a balance? Let's find out right now. Okay, I did crit. Now you will probably crit on your Azteca boss, but it's probably going to be like a fifty percent increase rather than a hundred percent. But let's just see. Okay, that did twenty k. So I would have done like. 14k on an Azteca and with the power Nova that would have done like 2k um, you would have done like 18k which is about how much health Azteca bosses usually have uh, I think they have like between like 14 to 18k health so um, just do like an extra blade or something and by the time you're in Azteca you have potent trap and sharpen blade trained anyways I have bare minimum stuff that's like accessible to me at level 70 level 60 so if, if I can do that much damage at this level, if you just wait an extra turn with the judge or whatever, that's literally how you can do it at those higher level worlds. So uh, anyways, this is the level 60 through level 99 gear and strategy guide. Pretty simple. Um, the only reason why people even say that these worlds can be a little difficult is because honestly, Azteca and Chrysalis are just long worlds with where the bosses just have a lot of health. Um, if you have good resist and you just take your time with battles, it really isn't that bad. Sure, Polaris, uh, Mirage, and all those higher level worlds, the bosses have so, such low health, but they don't have any, they have so much pierce at those levels that um, you can also die really quickly at those levels. They're just faster to do. The boss battles here, 
they just take longer because the boss have a lot of health but you don't die that easily because they don't have any pure stats and you can get really good resist stats at this level so anyways i hope you find this video helpful once i hit level 100 i and i you know do the solo dark more run and farm all that gear i'll do a level 100 to 129 guide for that um i'm also trying to finish farming gear on my death wizard so i'll also try to do the level 130 plus gear guide on that death wizard but honestly in pve one thing to understand is you don't have to get the best stats to do it the game is designed to be very playable and even if you're soloing the game um you really don't need to have the best gear except for like certain boss battles and even then you should be able to do it without having the best possible gear but i hope you enjoyed this i hope you found this helpful anyways thank you all so much for watching and as always have a good evening